Today I'm doing an experiment on some lambic hops and another experiment to see if I can clean up an off flavor in a sour beer that I did last winter. Um, so let me go in and I'll talk to you a little bit about the lambic hops part of it. A few weeks ago, Ryan Stiegel posted on Milk the Funk Facebook group what makes a goozy so goozy. <laughs> what makes a goose so goozy? And uh, it's an interesting question. There are a lot of responses like uh, spontaneous fermentation, which was my suggestion, and blending the way the beers are, are aged in barrels, turbid mashing, all that kind of stuff. I pointed out what exactly does it mean though, goozy? We have to define that characteristic because goose is pretty complex when it comes to characteristics. But everybody agrees that the goose tastes different than American sour beers. And what is that difference? To me, it was the bitterness in the beer, the bitterness that's in the goose. It tends not to be in sourness, and it's a different kind of bitterness than what you get from hops. It's more reminiscent of like a cheese bitterness, like you get from a really sharp cheese. So I thought that it comes from the spontaneous fermentation. Now, Ethan Tripp, uh, who was interviewed on Basic Brewing Radio a few years ago, on his Solera, and it was one of the people that got me um, into doing Solera. Uh, he suggested that it was hops, it's the lambic hops that do it. Um, I think somebody else said that they tasted some really old or uh, some young lambic in Belgium, and it was really bitter, really, really bitter. Uh, the bitterness is, just seems a little different though than what you normally get in like an IPA or something like that. Well, lambic hops are aged out in the air for a couple of years before they're used. So a lot of the alpha acids degrade, uh, the beta acids oxidize, or at least that's the, the popular uh, information that's what people say. Um, and the oxidized beta acids might contribute some bitterness. So I decided um, I was going to repeat my spontaneous beer that I did last winter. But I'm not going to make it spontaneous. This is it's kind of semi-spontaneous. My spontaneous beer had that bitter quality to it. And uh, it's something that I really want in my beers, in my sour beers. So I thought, well I'm going to do the exact same recipe as I did last winter for my spontaneous beer, but I'm not going to let it sit out overnight with the lid off the kettle to cool down. I'm going to um, rack a gallon of that spontaneous beer that I have back from December and use that as an inoculant so that I get the same Britannomyces and Pediococcus strains in there and maybe some Lactobacillus. Um, try to make it as controlled of an experiment as possible. So this recipe is really simple, just 10 pounds of Golden Promise and a pound of oats. I don't know why I'm using Golden Promise, it doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, I'm going to use that spontaneous beer to inoculate this beer. Now a lot of the enteric bacteria that were in the beer when it cooled down are dead. So there should only be Britannomyces and Pediococcus and maybe some Lactobacillus alive in it. Um, I had a crooked stave that night, so it was kind of a semi-spontaneous beer. I, I pitched crooked stave dregs into there and then I pitched my sour culture into it the next day, which also had some USO5 or SAFLO4, I believe. Now, a lot of people were uh, disagreeing with Ethan, saying that it was uh, a lot of other things that create that flavor, that unique kind of bitterness flavor, kind of on the back of the palate. So it's not as harsh as like a, a, a hop bitterness that you normally get anyway uh, from hops. So, um, but since Ethan Tripp was, he, he had to kind of defend his point and he was very passionate about it, so I think uh, to me that tells me that it's definitely worth trying. Uh, so I've got a pound of debittered lambic hops, supposedly zero alpha acids. I've heard some information that um, maybe not all the alpha acids are actually degraded. Uh, 
Probably depends on the on the hop and how long they've been stored. Uh, so these are whole leaf. I'm not going to use the whole pound. Just uh, a couple of ounces. And if this works out, then I'm going to start integrating these hops into my house culture sour beers. The second experiment is also has to do with my semi-spontaneous beer that I brewed last winter. Uh, like I said, I left it out in the kitchen with the lid off of the kettle to, to cool down overnight. Uh, so whatever bacteria and yeast was in the air fell right into the kettle. Um, that night I also pitched some dregs from a bottle of Surrette, uh, Cricket Stave. Uh, and then the next morning I racked a little bit of true from my one of my sour beers that uh, was used that had my sour culture in it uh, and has a fresh Safel 4 in it. Uh, so it wasn't a true spontaneous beer. Uh, it wasn't spontaneous really at all, but it did have the enteric bacteria um, that supposedly uh, contribute to the flavor of, of Lambic. Early on, those, those enteric bacteria, they produce kind of bad flavors, off flavors, and they die pretty quickly as soon as the pH of the beer goes down to about like 4.4, 4.5, something like that. And alcohol starts to get produced. Uh, those bacteria die, but the compounds that they create stick around and the Britannomyces metabolizes those into novel flavors. At least that's what the theory is and that's what uh, most people believe. So um, on my semi-spontaneous beer, I didn't take any chances on the pitching rate. I just went ahead and pitched uh, some bread and some, some, uh, some of my sour uh, culture but I also got the enteric bacteria in there to hopefully create that complex character. And uh, the beer has turned out really, really good so far. The only problem with it is it has a burnt rubber taste to it. And it's a very slight burnt rubber taste. But uh, I have a theory that some off flavors can be encouraged to be fermented out. I think that uh, metabolism of Britannomyces might, might speed that up. So if I were to encourage Britannomyces to increase their metabolism, uh, maybe I can clean that burnt rubber taste out a little faster. Um, that burnt rubber taste is, is noticed by uh, Vinny Trelurzo. He talked about it in his Spontaneous Beers, um, one of the Sour Hour podcasts. So I'm fully expecting that to be normal, that, that burnt rubber character. Uh, but I'm not willing to wait three years for the beer to be done. I don't want to have to do that. So if I can speed up the process, then I'm going to. Here in America, we're not. We're in home brewing. We're not restricted to any rules as far as you know making lambic. I'm not calling it lambic. It's not lambic. I don't live in Belgium, so I can't make lambic. Um, so I'm going to add some some of this work that I'm producing today to that spontaneous beer to see if it cleans up that burnt rubber taste after a little bit of time. I've got these lambic hops from Hops Direct. Uh, choice deep bittered acid zero leaf hops. Uh, they're not too expensive, pretty cheap. Sometimes they go on sale. Didn't find this on sale, but one pound should last me for a while. I'm only going to be using two ounces. When I first smelled these hops, and these hops smell the same. You can smell citrus, and you can also smell the cheesiness, like footy, kind of a stinky cheese, kind of a smell which is isovaleric acid. Um, also kind of a, like a bad breath almost. Kind of a smell. Not a very good description, but that is what it's like. A lot of people will say cheesy, but cheesy is such a generic term. Uh, first time I used these hop out, I was afraid to, to put them in my beer because I didn't want too much of that character in my beer, but that seems to be completely gone. I couldn't pick it out in my semi-spontaneous beer that I did before with, with aged hops. They do smell like uh, like maybe they were Centennials or Cascade. They have a, a light citrus aroma to them. And I'm just going to use two ounces of these. And then save the rest. Hopefully this works out and I can use this bag of hops for a while. The way that they create these hops, they just they just take the leaf hops and they age them out in the air, in a dry area, in a hot area. I've heard of some people like Jester King will age them in their barn and age them for two or three years. 
like that. So they're uh, yeah, definitely a totally different animal than what you're normally used to when you use hops in IPAs. Totally against the rules, so to speak. Completely oxidized and stinky. I don't know if you can see the flakes that are going on there, but that's one good indication of a good boil pH. You want to boil pH of about 5.0 to 5.1. And at that pH, the proteins start to coagulate like that, creating those flakes. And so that's a, that's a good sign of, of a good boil pH. I'm too lazy to take a pH measurement today. So I'm just going to go based on that. Look at the beerandwinejournal.com article. I'll link for more information on that. So Cantillon uses about twice this amount of hops. It uses uh, four ounces for a five gallon batch. And this is about half of that. But this is what I used in my last batch. So to keep things consistent, that's what I'm gonna use today. Later on I might experiment with uh, with upping that rate. We'll see. One thing on this beer is that I mash at 152. I think I mashed it a little bit higher, like 155 last time. Because I don't want to age the beer for a long time. When you're doing a proper lambic or even a regular sour beer with like Rosalaire or something, you want to mash at like 158, 160 even. Those higher dextrins will break down over time, give the pediococcus and Britannomyces a little bit of food, particularly the, the pediococcus, uh, to increase the acidity in the beer over time. But I'm not wanting to wait two or three years for this, these beers to be done, so I tend to mash lower and try to manipulate the, the fermentation profile of the, the lactic acid bacteria. So what I'll do is I'll let this work sit on the uh, on my culture for a couple of days before I pitch yeast in hopes that it'll create the lactic acid up front instead of having to wait for a couple of years for the lactic acid to to be developed. So here's that semi semi spontaneous beer that I fermented that I, uh, I brewed up last winter. I'm going to rack a gallon of this into my empty carboy and uh, rack a gallon of that wort that I just made into this into this fermenter and see if that fermentation cleans up the burnt river off taste that it has. If it cleans it up there's no guarantee that that's what did it but if it doesn't clean it up then I know that's not worth while doing. Just in a, just a little experiment and see if I can speed up the, the cleanup of that burnt river off flavor in that beer. And I'm using that one gallon to inoculate this new batch of beer. As I said before, it's going to have well, the Pediococcus and Britannomyces that's in that beer, and we'll see if we get a similar bitter, funky kind of profile. I pulled a little sample of my semi-spontaneous beer. It's got a nice, uh, kind of a whiskey color to it. Uh, it's got a lot of, uh, like, Granny Smith apple aroma going on. But, uh, but kind of like a bright, fresh uh, Granny Smith apple. So, not bad. Hmm. So the bitterness is, is there, but it's light. It's a lot lighter compared to... Um, I had a Lambic X recently. Uh, I had a bottle share. And it was very bitter. Uh, the 1112 was a pure Lambic one, not the fruited ones. It was really bitter. And uh, reminiscent of a Cantillon. This has that bitterness, and uh, I'm thinking that it might be uh, the hops. It's it's kind of a dirtier kind of a bitterness, um, but not aggressive. A uh, really more passive bitterness. Even if the level is is high, it's still a passive uh, effect on your palate. Uh, it's got light tartness. Um, pretty complex. Uh, sour flavor to it, not the best. Uh, probably will blend a little bit of my house sour into it. Uh, the burnt rubber flavor is actually, I'm not picking up on it right now, uh, so I'm wondering if exposing it to a little bit of oxygen when I did take a sample of it uh, about a month ago, 
I wonder if that affected it. Um, no, I, I have no idea. So, they do say that burnt rubber taste will last in a spontaneous beer uh, for at least six months, I've heard. Um, I've not heard anybody give like a minimum or maximum that they've had it in their beers. Uh, people don't share a lot of that information. Um, it's mostly pro brewers that, that have that information, I think. Uh, not a lot of home brewers uh, do spontaneous fermentation, and um, uh, some of them that, that do, uh, there are some blogs like uh, Amos Brown's blog, Bitter and Brown, uh, also Ed Coffey's blog, uh, Funk Factory Goosery has another good blog for, uh, for looking up Lambic stuff. Um, yeah, so not bad. We'll see what adding the additional wort is going to do to the beer. I'm going to do that anyway because I pulled a gallon out of the fermenter and I don't like to leave that much headspace. So I'm going to go ahead and add that wort back to the fermenter uh, and let it ferment for another few months before I take another sample. We're going to fill up the uh, semi-spontaneous fermenter first. Get that topped back up and then I'll fill the other fermenter. which. As you can see, it has one gallon of the semi-spontaneous beer in it as a inoculum. Sorry for the bad lighting, running out of daytime. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll keep everybody updated. Cheers.